Good morning all. Welcome to chemistry class. All of us know the importance of chemistry in our daily life. Look around us. Coming to our home. The kitchen. Kitchen is a wonderful chemical laboratory. Then food. Other human needs like medicines, uh, cosmetics. Then cleansing agents like detergent, soap, uh, toothpaste. And coming to building materials, ceramics, cement. Everywhere we can see chemistry. The digestion, transmission of nerve impulses, all these are taking place through chemical reactions. For example, digestion is nothing but an oxidation redox reaction. Okay, so chemistry, learning of chemistry and knowing chemistry is very important. There are various opportunities to learn chemistry. In and around our city, there are so many colleges and universities offering very good courses in the field of chemistry. For example, the CUSAT, Cochin University of Science and Technology is offering integrated MSCs in chemistry and also the applied chemistries like hydrochemistry, polymer chemistry and pharmaceutical chemistry in MG universities all are very good courses. And the career opportunities in this field of chemistry is very high. In these current situations of pandemic, you can guess the career opportunities of pharmaceutical chemist, biochemist, etc. So, chemistry is a wonderful subject and it is very easy to study once you get into it and start loving it. Now, I would like to introduce the syllabus of plus one chemistry. We have 14 chapters from general chemistry, inorganic chemistry, physical chemistry and organic chemistry in two parts of textbooks. The part 1 consists of 7 chapters and part 2 again 7 chapters. We will have a glance at each chapter. The first chapter is some basic concepts in chemistry. As the heading denotes, it discusses about the ba very basic concepts in chemistry like the different uh, atoms, molecules, their formula, molecular formula, atomic mass, molecular mass and different notations we are using in the field of chemistry, uh, units, conversion of units etc are discussed in this chapter. In the second chapter that is atomic structure. It is a continuation of your lower classes. In your 9th standard you might have studied about the atomic structure. In this chapter also, we are discussing various atomic models like Rutherford model, Bohr atom model, quantum mechanical model of atoms, their merits and demerits. And in a detailed discussion of electronic configurations of atoms are also explained in this chapter. Then chapter 3, classification of elements and periodicity in the properties. In this chapter, we are studying about the periodic table, periodic law and arrangement of elements in a periodic table. And also we are discussing the periodic properties of some chemical properties like electronegativity, electron gain enthalpy and ionization enthalpy. Then chapter 4 is chemical bonding and molecular structure. In this chapter, we are studying about different types of chemical bondings and the rules governing the chemical bonding, stability of molecules and also their structure. This is a very uh, important chapter with regard to your exam, high weightage for this chapter, around 6 to 8 marks are coming from this chapter. Then the fifth chapter is from physical chemistry that is states of matter. You know different states of matter, solid state, liquid state, gaseous state. In this chapter, there is a detailed explanation of gaseous state and the some properties of liquid states are explained. Then the sixth chapter is thermodynamics. This might be a new topic to you. Thermodynamics is a branch of chemistry and in this chapter, we are discussing the very basic concepts of thermodynamics. For example, the terminologies we are using in thermodynamics like enthalpy, work done, uh, and free energy etc. are explained. Then the chapter 7 that is chemical equilibrium. In this chapter, we are discussing about various chemical equilibria, the properties which govern the chemical equilibria, 
the rule which explains the change in properties like pressure, volume, concentration, etc. That is Le Chatelier principle. That principle you might have studied in your lower classes. And also towards the end of this chapter, we are studying about acids, bases and ionic equilibria. Then coming to part 2. Part 2 also consists of 7 chapters. The chapter 8 is redox reaction. Redox reaction is dealing with various type of oxidation and reduction reactions. And the key point in this chapter is balancing of a redox reaction. And it is a sure question in your exam. The ninth chapter is about a unique element in our periodic table that is the most abundant element in our universe, nothing but hydrogen. In this chapter, we are studying about the properties, preparation and reactions involving hydrogen and compounds of hydrogen like water, hydrogen peroxide, etc. Then the chapter 10 and 11 is a continuation of third chapter periodic table. Here we are discussing in detail about the S block elements and P block elements, the compounds of S block elements and P block elements, their preparation, properties, etc. Chapter 12 and 13 is coming from organic chemistry. In the plus one level, we have an introduction to organic chemistry. The chapter 12 is explains about the basic techniques and methods we are using in the purification, preparation, quantitative as well as qualitative analysis of organic compounds. And also it includes nomenclature and classification of organic compounds. Chapter 13 deals with hydrocarbons and you know what are hydrocarbons alkanes alkenes alkynes and arenes in this chapter we are studying in detail about their preparation structure nomenclature and reactions of hydrocarbons and the last chapter that is 14th chapter is environmental chemistry in this chapter, we are explaining environmental pollution in detail, that is air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. The sources of pollutants, how they are, uh, they can be removed and what are the remedies of these pollutions. Okay, so let us start with our first chapter, basic concepts in chemistry. All of you know what is a matter. Matter is anything which possesses a definite mass and occupies space. Matter can exist in different states of matter, that is solid state, liquid state and gaseous state. In solid state, the intermolecular force of attraction means the force of attraction between the molecules is very high. So the particles are very closely packed in a solid. Coming to liquid state, the intermolecular force of attraction decreases. So they can move, the liquids can flow. Coming to gaseous state, the intermolecular force of attraction is very negligible. So gas can easily move. The matter can be divided into two classes, mixtures and pure substances. Mixture means it's a combination of two or more substances. Mixture is again divided into two, that is homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture. Homogeneous mixture means where the two components, two or more components are mixed well. They are completely mixed with each other. We cannot separate them with simple methods. And their composition will be same throughout the mixture. Examples are sugar solution, salt solution are examples of homogeneous mixture. Coming to heterogeneous mixture, you take a mixture of grains and stones, we can easily separate them. So in heterogeneous system, the components can be easily separated and the composition will not be same throughout the mixture. The other class of matter is pure substances. Pure substances are again classified into two elements and compounds. Elements you know, you know various elements like copper, oxygen, gold, silver, all are pure elements. What are compounds? Compounds are formed by the combination of two or more elements in a definite ratio. For example, carbon dioxide. 
carbon dioxide is formed from carbon and oxygen in a ratio 1 is to 2 there is one carbon is combined with two oxygen atoms. another example is water where two atoms of hydrogen combines with one atom of oxygen to form water molecule H2O so the ratio is 2 is to 1 so in compound the two or more elements combine to form a molecule with a definite ratio now we will see the properties of matter and their measurements the properties of matter are two types physical properties and chemical properties examples of physical properties are mass volume density etc what are chemical properties chemical properties are acidity basicity combustibility combustibility means able to burn burning is known as combustion reaction with oxygen so these are examples of chemical properties and these properties are measured using various unit system like CGS system, MKS system, SI unit system etc. The most acceptable unit system is SI system. International system of units. In French it is known as system international. So the SI is the short of system international. SI units consist of seven basic units and derived units we can see the seven basic units one is length what is the unit of length meter is the unit of length in SI units second one is mass mass is measured in kilogram third one is time the unit of time is second fourth one is the amount of a substance it is measured in mole then electrical current it is measured in ampere then temperature measured in kelvin and luminous intensity but is luminous intensity the intensity of light it is measured in candela so these are the seven basic units we are using in SA system the derived units are obtained from these basic units for example velocity what is velocity velocity is distance by time so what is the unit of distance meter because it is a length and divided by time time the unit of time is second therefore the unit of velocity will be meter per second and the example density what is density mass by volume the unit of mass is kilogram unit of volume is length cube that is meter cube so the unit of density will be kilogram per meter cube now we will see the properties of matter in detail for example mass and weight are they same is mass and weight are same no mass means it is the amount of matter present in an object what is weight then weight is the force exerted by gravity on that object so mass of an object will be constant it will be same everywhere but weight will vary the weight of a stone on the surface of earth will not be equal to the weight of the stone in space the weight will vary because it is the force exerted by gravity on an object the second property of matter is volume volume is measured in unit meter cube that is length cube other units we are using to measure volume are for liquids liter 1 liter means 1000 milliliter the other units are centimeter cube decimeter cube can also be used to represent volume another property is density density is mass by volume and its unit is kilogram per meter cube then another physical property of matter is temperature you know what is temperature temperature is the amount of heat energy present in an object Temperature can be measured in three different scales. First one is called degree Celsius, second one is degree Fahrenheit, third one is Kelvin. And we can convert one reading into another. For example, the Fahrenheit can be converted into degree Celsius by the equation 1 Fahrenheit is equal to 9 by 5 degree Celsius plus 32 and the kelvin we can convert degree celsius into kelvin scale by the equation 1 kelvin is equal to 1 degree celsius plus 273.15 
So let us summarize today's class. We have seen what is matter, different states of matter, different classes of matter and properties of matter and their units in different systems. So thank you all.